Uh, this guy, this guy is close to my heart. Um, oh, he's hanging he, out back he's, there. He's, he's hanging yeah, out back we're, there. We're pointing at him. We're uh, giving him the look. So Come on there over. there was a time where I was required... Well, volunteered. I won't say required. Where'd he go? Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, oh, he's getting do, a little water. To, to wrap up the conference, um, I, I start. I don't. I don't want to talk about meat this whole time. But I ra- <laughs> ended up wrapping up a uh, uh, peer conference, and it got to be this thing. And Rob made it a Timbits, whatever. And that happened. We don't have Tim bits, but what we really want to do is have a Rob bits this Rob time. Bits. There you go. Rob bits, and we want to know. Um, uh, we want you to wrap up the conference for us, Rob. There you go. Um, That's me. I'm not crooked. Yeah, I'm looking I'm you. crooked. What You're a little crooked. Doing? We're going to well, fix that. We're yeah, going to fix that right now. There we go. Oh, look at that. that. That's is a little that, better. Is I that, can't do the height bit. He's you got to uh, fix that because yeah. I'm not I mean, bald. Do we really want to fix <laughs> that? You're f- oh, that's, <laughs> that's the other way. Oh, there you go. There you there go. go. That's All a little better. Let's face it, too. Yeah. When we did the Tim bits, we, we were doing some improv. That was some improv. Yeah. We were at a peer conference in yeah. Seattle. It was in this very city we invented, the Tim Bid Oh, Notion. that's, yeah. And uh, we asked you to basically, uh, because you had this, uh, I, I would say the skill and experience you've had led to this beautiful naivety. And <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and basically, we, <laughs> we asked you what you picked up from yeah. some of these talks. And you had yeah. people like, I don't know, myself and James Bach and a... You know, uh, Harry Robinson, all these guys arguing about nuance of testing, nuance. Yeah. And what did what did you pick up? What did you get? And you, you sort of came in with these wise things saying, boundaries are important. <laughs> and we all stepped back and you said, you know, that's an important message. Why don't we start with that? And and so that's what began the Timbits. Yeah. And uh, then uh, you and I, uh, I don't know how the AST did this, but they trusted us. To be the, uh, oh, the co-chairs. No, they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To oh, be yeah. the co-chairs. We we ran last year's um, program for cast, and uh-huh. we 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 worked it into that too. Yeah. And uh, I think the Timbits notion is basically to look and do a recap of of the conference and the key sort of moments of it. And so while I attended the conference, I started tried to keep that sort of notion in mind. Timbits, by the way, for those of pe- people who are watching, perhaps. You don't realize that uh, Timbits is a Canadian donut phenomenon. T- oh, yeah. Tim Hortons oh, that's right. is a coast-to-coast <laughs> donut chain across Canada, including uh, Canadian provinces that are in the lower 48 states. Uh, and we have um, Timbits, our little sort of donut circle things, and uh, we eat those and enjoy them from coast to coast. It's the only thing that keeps our country together. Right. And so we do not have a t- <laughs> one point, like $1.3 trillion of debt ceiling to, right, right. Uh, yeah. to draw us Sticking together. Right, right. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so that's where we got the Timbits with the pun on your name. Yeah. Uh, so, th- so the the Rob bits, if you will, you know, from this conference. Yes, you, you want me to run? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's run. Let's run. What are you saying, go, Rob? I'm going to do this chronologically. Yeah. I first of all did not multitask and didn't go to all the sessions. I went through a, a linear thread, and the beautiful thing this week was that although I'm I'm actively participating in it, uh, my big thing is tomorrow. I'm doing a big tutorial yeah. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's and so during the, the regular sessions, I wasn't involved in like A, the organization, or B, <laughs> doing a talk. So I could actually engage with the people. And most of the notions and stuff, of course, I got is the quarter talk, right? Mm-hmm. There are lots of notions in the quarter talk. And people were affected by different talks in, in different ways. And I think that, uh, I think James was successful in getting uh, the notion of context to be the forefront of almost every discussion. And so I heard a lot about context. I heard a lot about context uh, variables. I heard a lot about people wanting to change how they did things to put a little more context sensitivity in it, be it uh, test planning, test organization, test, there's all huge set, test-centric. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's mm-hmm. just face this, this is a massive test-centric bunch yeah. of people here. Yeah. And I, I felt a little sad, though, because th- it was a bit too test-centric. I wish there was people huh. hearing this message from the other communities. There's oh. the non-testing people. Sure. Right. Didn't, didn't hear it. There's some great messages this week. But let me give you my, my cut. So Michael Bolton, basically, he taught us two things. We don't need freaking PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and he's not the one who invented that, by the way. That's, that's something that we, we've all known for years. The PowerPoint actually slows you down. Doesn't Ed Tufty taught us that one. But uh, he also taught us to go back to the sort of fundamentals, the roots. Mm-hmm. He was quoting stuff from ancient Greek literature mm-hmm. and the the modern scientific movements and 
uh, whom and, and all sorts of different fundamental things. But every single point Michael was making was think, think, adapt, mm -hmm. and challenge your models, challenge what your thinking is. And, and I just love that. And so it was a very fundamental thing. I've heard many of the points that Michael brought up before. I've heard many of the points before. But I felt packaged the way he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm gave everybody a wonderful amount of ammunition. And I just hope, I don't know if that's streamed or if we can get oh, a Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we that. stream that and that's, there'll be a copy. That's, that's a very nice talk. And mm -hmm. uh, even if we can put it in paper, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's going to help our context-driven movement an awful lot. Uh, so I flowed from that to the first session, and there's a lot to choose from. There's, a, there's certainly a lot mm -hmm. to choose from. It was a good program this year. Um, I, what I went into this time was the trouble, the trouble in, in mind, mind. troubleshooting yeah. skills. And this was awesome. This uh, Chris Blaine put this together. And finally, we're getting back to what is the roots of testing. If you look back at software testing, okay, it's been talked about, what, for years. People say the first book about testing was probably Glenford Mayer's 1979 right. orange book, Art of Software Testing. Some people go back and say, well, Bill Hetzel in 1972 put together a collection from a conference about software testing. <laughs> okay, that could be the first book. Well, the first book I go to is in 1957 by McCracken. And in McCracken's book, his chapter about software testing wasn't called software testing. It was about troubleshooting. Uh -huh. Testing hmm. used to be the conflation of troubleshooting, mm -hmm. debugging, and testing hmm. all put together. And what was beautiful with Chris's talk is he talked about some absolutely pragmatic ways that you can build a whole skill set around troubleshooting. And troubleshooting, of course, uh, is a much broader than testing. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just finding the problem, but it's isolating the cause and maybe pointing out the solution. And I think that that was a beautiful opportunity for us to learn a lot about value. And um, so I thought that was a great first session for me to attend. Mm -hmm. yeah, you want to throw a question at me if you want. Otherwise, I'll just do No, I, you know, I like what you're doing. You know? <laughs> so... Keep rolling. After that, I, I basically had lunch. I had three sandwiches. They were a bit dry. <laughs> a little dry. Um, <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> everybody in the conference was talking about dry, dry sandwiches for right. the rest of the day. Then I went to uh, a session. I was very surprised. Chris, you saw Henrik just a few minutes ago. Yeah. He, he, was, right. he was on this uh, yep. talk. And Henrik ran a talk called, Now What's Your Plan? Mm -hmm. Now, what's your plan? I was thinking, oh, this is going to be awesome. Because he's, he's, first of all, very context sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big guy in charge of uh, just-in-time testing universe, right? I am telling everybody, <laughs> don't get stuck on your ideas, right? right? Watch context changes. Everything is changing. Be careful. The world is turbulent, right? Mm -hmm. Don't stick on anything. So I thought we'd, we'd see uh, an interesting little lecture with a couple of exercises. No, he went in there, and he hit us, you know, bam! <laughs> exercise, bam, exercise, <laughs> bam, exercise. And what was the exercise? Here's a problem. What are you going to do to test it? And then yeah. three minutes later, boom, we changed the project. Boom, we changed, boom. And it, with, within, uh, within an hour, we had gone through at least three iterations of this with a group of five or six people who had never worked together before in their life. And he made all sorts of fantastic points yeah. about not just context, but about the many rich type of variables in context and how uh, factors, uh, business factors, technological mm -hmm. factors, and organizational factors influence uh, projects' context. So I think Henrik's uh, talk there was, was brilliant. And it was because that was like dive into activities, no lecture stuff. And, of course, mm -hmm. for me, that was, that was pretty sharp. I, I love that a lot. I'm a big fan of the facilitation style at this conference, but this was different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this was, the right. style was different. Yeah. It was bang, bang, bang. And you, you, you didn't have a chance to react. You were participating in the activity before you knew it was an activity. It was just <laughs> awesome. Um, diving from that, I don't know, tell a compelling testing story uh, by Ben Kelly. I was expecting a reiteration of a lot of the earlier work of James Bach mm -hmm. on, on metrics telling a story. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was basically, I don't know, I was quite, uh, quite, quite pleased to see sort of a different slant on things. I think, I think uh, Ben is a good speaker. I think he's got a lot of great stories to tell. And I think what he, what he basically made, made the point of was that if you can't convince someone that what you're doing is useful, what's the point? He talked about stuff like, you know, you have standard metrics reports with mm -hmm. tons of numbers and percentages. And who needs that? 
You know, people want to care about something. What do they care about? And he's talking about getting much closer to your audience, much closer to what people need to learn about. Am I breaking things? No, no, no. no. Right. Well, Did I break something? You didn't break anything. You Did I destroy you, your camera? You may have hit the camera. <laughs> Is it insured? <laughs> I'm uh, not paying for your camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. You're all right. <laughs> you're insured, Rob. <laughs> uh, one okay. thing, one thing, maybe watch the table. The mics are making a bunch okay, of noise, but so. don't worry about it. Keep going. So the afternoon session there, I basically didn't um, uh, participate in any more of the sessions. Um, I'm a big advocate of Paul Holland's work on community building, and as you probably know, I've been you know passionately and personally involved mm -hmm. in that. So I didn't uh, sit in on that one, but I think that that's the type of thing that you'll see at CAST that you just won't see at any other type of testing conference anywhere. It's a conference that really cares about community, and we take the time to explain to people what we do and what you can do as a conscious effort. So that was a Paul's, that's the, the afternoon break thing. Paul did that. And also Justin Hunter, who mm -hmm. I, I had spent a lot of time uh, working with uh, him, studying his tool, giving him recommendations about the Hexwise oh, that's tool. Right. And so I, I didn't actually sit in that session, but mm -hmm. I was pretty uh, intimate with his work. So I have to say that the afternoon break, I just took off. <laughs> I, I buggered up. Did you notice I wasn't here? I, <laughs> wait, wait. We, you, were, there, we I, were looking for you. We were looking, we, for we were me, looking uh, around and couldn't so, see you. Someone owed me money or something. You <laughs> took a break during the afternoon break. I, I, I don't get I mean, it. I mean, go on. There you go. If you're allowed to ask me questions, what can I say? So, so then, then the evening reception, I was shocked to find out there was this limit on the wine ticket. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Did, yeah, I, yeah, did yeah, you yeah. hear about that? Is everyone so, complaining so about So dry sandwiches and low quantities of wine, yeah, I understand. So basically, we need more members. So if you see this, join the AST. Right, right, right. We could use that. We, we we'll put it towards the wine fund, right? For, for next year's <laughs> conference. That's right. Uh, day two. Day two. Busy day for me. Busy day for me. So the keynote, uh, James Box keynote, uh, two things about James Box keynote. The title was, right, New Cool Things. Mm -hmm. But what he did was wonderful. He made a mind map and yeah. he walked us through it. And I spent so much time teaching people yeah. how to do exactly what he did. It was graceful. It was clean. Everything he said was experiential. And when it wasn't, he pointed it out. Right. He said, Fred Smith said, uh, this is a cool tool. I don't know. You should check it out. Right. It, was, it was awesome. Uh, so James, I think James um, highlighted a lot of things from his desk that he feels are changing. I'm not, I'm not sure that uh, there was any one that jumped out at me. Uh, I did like the, the fact that he was saying something about um, the demise of the factory school of testing, if I, if I understand. I think that, I think was, that was it, Part wasn't of it? the message. There's a lot, of there, a lot yeah. there, yeah. Uh, but that, so I'm interested in that message, but at the same time, I think that uh, that we're going to be stuck with that class of uh, testing for a few generations to come. So, mm -hmm. although the demise is coming, it's a bit early to plan the um, the wake. Um, <laughs> as, <laughs> <laughs> but it was an excellent, it was a brilliant talk. It really got me going. I was very psyched and motivated uh, by that talk. Um, the earlier sessions, of course, I I, I just. At, at the, the 1045 session, I jumped in with Greg McNally's talk on developing a professional testing culture. Mm. And it was one of my, my highest professional honors to attend that talk because, of course, he disclosed my work with them on the project. I've been working with Progressive Insurance mm -hmm. now for uh, over a year on their transformation. They're trying to take 400 testers and basically turn them from the factory school to the contact school. And this is, this is one of the coolest wow. software testing initiatives going on in America right now. Mm -hmm. They are big customers for BBST, big customers for James RST courses, mm -hmm. and they they basically are trying to t turn the whole testing culture of the company into a cognitive thinking value contributor in, instead of tick off the list, mm -hmm. uh, chain of command, right. sort of uh, checkers, basically. And so Greg gave a beautiful discussion of that, but what was beautiful was not just Greg's work, uh, but during that session, we had in open season, like the minute they declared open season, we had like 20 green cards up just like that. Boom. And the dialogue <laughs> was fantastic. It was a wonderful, wonderful discussion. A lot of people were, were interested in how his company was approaching it, and they had a lot of ideas to contribute. So I thought that that was an excellent example. Uh, it was almost the perfect cast presentation. Keep in mind that Greg is not a professional speaker. Greg's just a team member, like 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 you know Joe Joe off the street tester guy, mm -hmm. but he was working on some very important stuff, and he had a lot to say. And, uh, and I think that the audience, the people in the group, 
wanted to draw from it, and the format of Cast lets you do that. That's what we can do that other Absolutely. conferences cannot do. Um, moving along, right? So lunch. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what a lunch. Yeah, know. lunch. Dry sandwiches yeah, dry again, sandwiches. right? Uh, no, no, no. It was no, pasta had, that day. We had really good yeah. lunch. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, we had. I got a compliment, um, and I was told to take it up to you know the management or whoever you know does stuff with these compliments. They love this lunch. This lunch oh, was great. They they said great two. things about More it. More about the pasta. There was pasta actually, right? There yeah. was, yeah, and choices, and you can, um, <laughs> you know, put your own dressing on your salad, that sort of thing. <laughs> we can talk about salads if you want, <laughs> or we can talk about testing. I like. Sa- <laughs> <laughs> I like salad. Wow. Rob. Wow. No, wow. Go on. <laughs> no, this is, we'll, we'll take you up on that. I know some good salad <laughs> restaurants in Manhattan. All right. So coming right along after this dry sandwich lunch, um, we, <laughs> we, we 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 jump into the afternoon. <laughs> And I went to Greg Milnick's uh, Game Films, a technique uh, for reflective tester, and I just thought that was absolutely insightful and brilliant. And I think you it's one of those, you heard it first at CAST. You heard it first at CAST. This was awesome. He was showing how we can take the notion of watching a game film, like you'd see, game mm-hmm. film like you'd see in a football game. Mm-hmm. You, you studied the game, you watched the plays, you see what people did. And what Greg did was showed us how it was applied both at an academic context when he was working in universities and at Microsoft with some of the projects he was working on, where you basically have films, with some of them with audio tracks, some without, of the actual testing going on, and you basically then analyze it. And he went through like many different styles and, and approaches, many frameworks of analysis. Mm-hmm. But the whole point is that you capture excellence and you find weakness. Hmm. And you, you basically, hopefully with, with this sort of tool mechanism, we can use this to help be a reflective tester. Mm-hmm. And a reflective tester looks carefully at what they've done and sees how it matches what the values that the key stakeholders were expecting from you and see how you can improve that mm-hmm. in the future. So I think that uh, Greg's thing was just awesome. The game film stuff, absolutely amazing. I'd never seen anything like that before. Uh, unfortunately, at the same time, there was so much stuff going on. A lot of people were interested in the um, the school's debate. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And although I'm I, I, I'm too familiar with with the issues of that debate to want to sort of listen to it again and again, again and, and again. again. <laughs> but I think people need to know it. Yeah. Especially people who are young in testing, and who are faced with uh, stakeholders who have weird notions of what testing really is. So I think the the debates around the schools of testing gives people mm-hmm. tools of argumentation. So although I didn't test participate in those things, I think it's a very mm-hmm. very important thing to have at, at Cast. I, I as I said, I went to Gre- uh, Greek's thing. It was wonderful. Uh, moving right along, uh, the session from two twenty to three thirty today. Uh, we only had like uh, ten minutes between sessions. By the way, that wasn't very much time. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and there was a big lineup at the bathroom. It was worse Uh-oh. than worse than uh, Shea Stadium during. <laughs> <laughs> seventh inning stretch. <laughs> a- a- anyhow, the, we, we basically went to another session. After that, what did I see? Um, yes, when should a tester test less? And this, I was expecting a talk about this whole subject of what not to test, mm-hmm. right? Prioritizing, focusing, scoping your testing. But they came at it from an ethical and cultural hmm. perspective. Interesting. And they talked about cases, at least two rich rich experience reports about cases when they were asked not to test or not to report certain types of bugs. And so, so the ethical dilemmas and thinking came out. And it was it led to uh, one of the, I think, one of the coolest uh, discussion threads I've ever seen. It was an awesome discussion thread that, was, that uh, was, came out of that. And uh, a lot of people wanted to weigh in. Unfortunately, yeah. um, and I think this is a good thing, I, I really do, that we have, we have a community of people who... Uh, believe in ethics. I think that the AST is one of the things that we're all we're all proud of. Is mm-hmm. we have the uh, the code of ethics, code of ethics. And, and we believe in it. And I know I was the ethics chair for years, mm-hmm. and I, I actually was instrumental in in that phase of the AST. But today we have that, and if you if you sit in that room and listen to the people talking, the core ethical principles I think consistently were bought in by by the whole community mm-hmm. what was what was interesting was the nuance the tactic the strategy how do you deal with it what if you're in an, a situation where your ethics drive you one way but you have to eat you have to pay the bills right, right. how do you right. balance that and so we talked about the the reporting and the focus and the scoping and not falling for some of these uh, pitfalls and traps people set for you it was very very 
a fantastic discussion. I just love that talk. So that was, um, uh, when should a tester test less? Again, as I said, it, it, I thought originally it was going to be mostly scoping, but it, it was scoping to a degree, but it was a lot of the ethical and the cultural concerns. Mm -hmm. Wonderful talk. And moving along, uh, after that, there was uh, Karen Johnson working on a virtual team, and that was delightful. That was delightful. <laughs> what Karen, of course, her style was, uh, first of all, very uh, inconsistent with the style that the facilitators are used to here because the facilitators here have been trained by that, um, what, the guy who oh, what's that guy's name? What would you call the guy? That, um, Paul. Paul. Oh, man, I hate, that. I hate that guy. He's, yeah, he's the guy with the whip and the That's, chain. Uh, yeah, he's. You know the guy. Uh, anyhow, he's, he's basically got <laughs> everybody all lined up in one certain facilitation style. And Karen decided on her own, without quite coordinating with the facilitator, <laughs> that she would do a section and then have Q and A about the section. Yeah. <laughs> and so there was like mini open seasons all through the talk, and it, it, <laughs> it was it was sort of funky to watch the soldier saying, ah, "What do I do? What do I do?" But Karen's talk was wonderful. She went through through some of the most practical aspects I've ever seen about working on a virtual team, and she included. All sorts of different types of projects, including a couple of recent examples on agile style projects with Scrum sort of things. Uh, really cool the stuff. Like she brought up stuff like how do you deal with physical documents when you're in a virtual oh, presence sure. and stuff like that. And some of the strategies are actually, if you have to talk about the physical document, then maybe we should be present. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? There was some really nice stuff. She talked about the office organization, the practical things, issues like, for example, what if your kids are screaming in the room down the hall and you're trying to have a conference call? <laughs> this is the practical stuff. Right. And, and so people, once they caught on to how pragmatic the talk was, everybody had a question. Everybody had something hmm. to contribute. It was, I think, I thought one of the, one, it was a delight. It was just an awesome, awesome session. And it contrasted so much the other sessions that I, I just thought it was wonderful. So it was a good balancing, a good end mm -hmm. into the day. So that's that's basically the sessions that I according to Rob. <laughs> Rob bits. <laughs> a little oh. bit of Rob bits, but I, I, I wish I could I wish I could you know you know Tim, I wish I could split myself and do what we tried to do before, right? <laughs> that was tough. We tried that to was do tough, every Rob. single session. Yep. Yep. And, and get something tough. from it. Yeah. No, Rob, I think that's beautiful. Um, any questions? Or? I mean, any any general thing about the conference? I mean, I think that was great. That's exactly what we were looking okay, for. So the, yeah, the general points about the conference, first of all, I think that it's beautiful that we're building community. And I think that the AST has finally hit a threshold. I think that we we know our identity much better now than we made mm -hmm. five years ago. Now, you got to keep in mind, I have talked at every single CAST conference since they've come into existence. Mm -hmm. And I've been active in AST before and after in all sorts of different levels. I really believe that we now are very clear on who we are and what our mission is. What we've got to do, though, is we've got to step out there and encourage and, and get people who are not your day-by-day -day AST people to want to come to, mm -hmm. to, to cast. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time now to sort of, sort of spread the horizon a bit and sort of evangelize a bit outside of the normal day-by-day -day community. But it is, it is, um, it could, one thing CAS could become is the annual context-driven communities testing thing. But I think it's also a chance, I think, for everybody in whatever community of testing, you know, to pick up on innovations, to pick up ideas, to pick up on people, and of course to build, to help build community. Mm -hmm. and, right. Uh, so that's where I think we're going to go. I think we've got to go a little broader and maybe try to get more variety of people at CAS in the future. But I think this is a coming-of-age CAS. Seems like a good, strong start overall. Yeah. Perfect, Rob. Right. Thank, I think that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Thank Rob. You Thanks for joining us, okay. and thanks for the summary. No problem.